Uh, there you go. Thank you so much. Perfect, Councilor. We can hear you. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you. Ready to go? Okay. It's four o'clock, so let's call to order the planning committee meeting of April 3rd. Motion on the minutes. Move seconded. All those in favor, contrary, carried. Our next committee meeting will be April the 16th in these very chambers. And the first item on the agenda, just so everybody knows, Michael Wolf is on the video, and so is Carol Day. And I'm not sure if anybody else is here, and we have a full house with Andy. Alexa and Jack. All right, the first item is an application by a billiard architect and company for rezoning at 8180, 8200, 8220, 40, 60, 80, and 8300 Leslie Road from a single detached RS1E zone to a light industrial office limited commercial Z121 Aberdeen Village City Center zone and the school institutional use and in SI zone. And the recommendation is that it be introduced and give first reading. And we've got Sarah and Wayne here. So Sarah, are you on? Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Staff have no additional comments to provide. The staff report before you today is in support of a rezoning application in the city center industrial reserve limited commercial area in Aberdeen Village. Brief highlights of the project include facilitating one six-story non-residential industrial and limited commercial mixed-use strata titled building. The developer intends to create strata lots for sale. Office spaces are restricted to a maximum of one office strata lot per floor. The total building includes ground level commercial retail and restaurant space fronting onto the proposed linear park along Hazelbridge Way and wrapping around the corner to front onto Leslie Road. There is industrial space on all floor levels, including mezzanine space at the second floor level of the ground floor industrial units. Office space is located on the fourth and fifth floor levels. Indoor and outdoor amenity space is located on the third floor level for the shared use of all units. Vehicle access is provided to Hazelbridge Way at the south edge of the site and provision of a statutory right of way along the drive aisle will provide vehicle access for future potential light industrial limited commercial development on the four neighboring properties to the east. Design and construction is to meet step two of the BC Energy Step Code together with connection to a city DEU or provision of a low carbon building energy system on site to be transferred to the city at no cost to the city. Voluntary developer contributions are provided towards public art and community amenities in compliance with city policy. The proposed development is consistent with the city center area plan industrial reserve additional density criteria and provides 
a community amenity contribution for city facilities. Provision of a 10 meter wide linear park along Hazelbridge Way, which will come in the form of a fee simple lot and the design and construction at no cost to the city through servicing agreement process. This application includes the proposed sale and acquisition of the city owned remnant lot at 8180 Leslie Road, adjacent to the developer owned lots and located fronting Hazelbridge Way. Road dedication is provided along Hazelbridge Way and Leslie Road. Park Road and engineering improvement work is secured through the city's standard servicing agreement process. Thank you. Okay, are there any questions? All right, seeing none, oh, Councilor Hobbs. Uh, thank you, and through the chair. Uh, thanks for the report and thanks for the outline. There are some pretty significant uh, features to it. Just one question is on the linear park. When I look at the map, I think it's page 20, um, and I apologize if I missed it somewhere in the report, but what's the kind of future connections for that? Um, does it go all the way over to uh, the east and connect to the future river? Uh, I don't think that would go that far. So could you just describe what that would connect to later on? Um, sure, and we do have park staff in here as well who, who may be better suited to speak to the overall vision and intent. Um, but my understanding is that this is a, an active um, linear park space <laughs> connecting between more substantial parks uh, at Canby Road to the north and along Lansdowne Road to the south. And as you've mentioned, um, that park system has further fingers that branch out um, along Lansdowne Road towards the west. So if I'm, I'm correct in understanding, the, the whole thing with linear parks is that connectivity, right? So as we go forward, not just two years, but five years, 10 years, 15, 20 years from now, we're gonna have these um, linear parks connecting to what you might call more major traditional parks. Fair assessment? Correct. Okay, thanks. Okay, is there um, anybody on screen? No Second, all those in favor? Contrary, carry. Thank you very much, Sarah. Anyway, okay, the next application is an application by the Perney Group for a temporary commercial permit uh, on uh, 13651 Bridgeport. And the application is by that group, which will allow uh, for a maximum of um, 1490 um, square meters of floor area to be used for warehouse sales limited uh, to the safe space of household uh, application or appliances and the provision of 87 parking spots at uh, 13650 on Bridgeport until February 28th, uh, 27 it be considered and that this application be forwarded to the May uh, 21st, 24 public hearing in these chambers. And uh, we've got Laurel and Josh. Okay, Laurel. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, this temporary commercial use permit application proposes to allow 1,490 square meters or 16,043 square feet of space at the subject site to be used for warehouse sales in order to conduct the sale of household appliances to the public. This activity is associated with an existing operation. A temporary commercial use permit was previously issued to the applicant in December 2020 and expired in December 2023. The applicant has provided details of their attempts to secure a suitably zoned site to relocate their operations over the length of the previous permit, but they've been unsuccessful in their efforts to date. The applicant is requesting consideration of this temporary use permit to allow them additional time to find a suitably zoned property elsewhere in the city. The proposed TCUP expiry date is February 28, 2027 and can and coincides with the expiry of the applicant's current lease. Thank you. Okay, are there any questions on this one? Three, um, Alexa, um, you're on. Yep, thank, go ahead. thank you. Uh, through you to staff. So is staff, staff satisfied that they've done their due diligence in looking for alternate locations? You said that they've provided uh, a track record of looking for new spaces. Um, through the chair to Councillor Liu, um, yes, the applicant has provided a 
memo, a back several memos, um, one of which is attached as an attachment to the report, um, in which they detailed 25 properties, um, of which they've made um, seven offers on five properties. Um, so we've seen um, substantial efforts to find and obtain uh, an appropriate property. Okay. So if we give them another three years, are we fairly confident they'll be able to find something else? Do we just keep kicking this down the curb? Uh, through the chair to Councillor Liu, uh, the applicant has shown a willingness uh, to continue to, on their efforts uh, in the information that is attached to the um, to our report and the information that we did receive from the applicant. They they have continued to express their commitment to continuing to find a suitably zoned site elsewhere in the city. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? Okay, motion on the motion. Oh, Chuck. I just want to clarify it further. So this is an extension of an original uh, temporary yeah. permit. So uh, in 2027, this will expire. And then if they want to stay at the same place, they have to submit a new application, right? Not another extension. Through the chair to Councillor Ao, yes, they would need to reapply for a temporary use permit. Okay, good, thank you. Okay. We're all clear? All right, committee moved, seconded. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Contrary, carried. Thank you. Thanks very much. Okay. Uh, the next uh, application uh, is a request to extend the rezoning adoption deadline uh, for the application by Land Oral Devel Oval Development Limited at 6851 71 Elmbridge Way. And staff recommendation is it be denied. And um, I understand we are going to Kevin Ng and uh, and Wayne are going to make a presentation on this one. Thank you. Right. Kevin. Thank you very much. Um, the report before committee is related to a rezoning, a rezoning adoption extension request for the high density mixed use redevelopment at 6851 and 6871 Elmbridge Way. I have nothing further to add to the report, but would like to take the opportunity to briefly highlight the following. The applicant's request is to extend the rezoning adoption deadline from April 15th, 2024 to June 10th, 2024. As outlined in the staff report, the reason for the initial April 15th, 2024 deadline was associated with the change in the city's affordable low-end market rental lemur housing policy program uh, in November of 2021 that increased the required amount of built affordable units from 10% to 15%. Provisions were built into this housing policy change to allow for in-stream rezoning applications or proposals to proceed based on the requirements in place prior to the change and also establish deadline dates for the rezoning bylaw to be adopted within one year of council consideration of the proposal. Staff and the applicant have been working collaboratively and progress has been made on completing some of the rezoning consideration items as noted in the staff report. However, despite this progress, staff are recommending denial of the applicant's extension request as a proposal would not be compliant with in-stream protection provisions when changes were approved to the city's housing, Lemur housing policy. In consideration of the applicant's rezoning adoption extension request to June 10th of 2024, and progress made to facilitate completion of the rezoning considerations for this project, staff do believe it is possible to complete the rezoning consideration items so that the rezoning bylaw can be adopted by the June 10th, 2024 requested extension. On this basis, option two is provided for council consideration in the staff report that would grant the applicant's request and allow the extension. Uh, happy to answer any questions of committee. Are there any? Um, we do have um, a speaker from Landa, if you want to hear that first. May, okay. Can we maybe excuse staff? And I have Chi Chi Nai from uh, Landa wants to speak to us in person. Please come and take. Uh, I'm sorry. Oh. Be quicker. Okay, you have five minutes. Let us tell us what's on your mind. Good.
Good afternoon, counselors. Thank you for the opportunity to speak uh, in front of you today. My name is Chichi Kai. I'm a senior planner with the Puni Group, a planning consulting firm uh, based in Vancouver. I'm here with Kevin Chung from Landa Global Properties, and he's the owners and developers of 6851 and 6871 Elmbridge Way. So Landa received a third reading of their rezoning bylaw on May 15, 2023. And since then, they've been working with city staff to address the conditions required for bylaw adoption. So despite the strong efforts to date by both Landa and city staff, there are still key items that need to be completed, including review of legal agreements and offsite design drawings. So throughout the process, uh, they there were some unforeseen delays, including additional outreach that was undertaken with the neighboring strata building and revisions to the shared lane design, which added roughly an additional seven months to the process. So as Kevin mentioned, uh, Landa is seeking an eight-week extension to their rezoning adoption deadline from April 15, 2024 to June 10, 2024. So staff has acknowledged that the additional eight weeks is enough uh, to complete the outstanding items. So not only is the eight-week extension critical to allow for the completion of the outstanding rezoning conditions, it also allows Landa to deliver a viable project that provides a number of benefits to the city, including new homes and lemur units to help address the housing crisis and a 189-room hotel to support the economic development in the city. So the project benefits are shown on the screen in front of you. Landa is also seeking an extension to the in-stream protection provided to rezoning applications that were submitted prior to the adoption of the amended Lemur program in November 2021. This rezoning application was submitted in June 2021. At that time, the Lemur requirement was 10%, and that was built into the performa to ensure that it can be delivered along with a financially feasible project. So a lot has changed over the last three years, um, including a global pandemic, unprecedented increases in both interest rates, construction costs, and inflation, which have put unforeseen strain on the project. Revising the residential tenure mix, uh, tenure and mix to deliver additional lemur units at this point would render the project financially impossible. So from conception, this project has taken close to five years to get to this point, including numerous hours by city staff, project team, and professional consultants. So Lana is fully committed to delivering this project and associated benefits to the city of Richmond. And the eight-week extension, including continued in-stream protection under the initial Lemur program, is critical to help get this project over the finish line. So we kindly ask you to support the eight-week extension request, and thank you for your time. I'll turn it over to Kevin to, to say a few words. Sorry, this Kevin. <laughs> Good afternoon, counselors. Um, thank you for your time and consideration for hearing our case today. My name is Kevin Chung. I am the CEO and owner of Land Global Properties. Uh, we are here today to ask for an eight-week extension to the rezoning adoption date of our project at uh, Richmond Oval. Uh, this is a very exciting project for us. It has been five years in the making for our company, as well as three years of planning and working with the city of Richmond. And um, I'm sure everyone here knows and probably heard a million times that the market conditions are not super favorable. Uh, the project in front of us today went through um, a, COVID, a pandemic. We have high interest rate environment, inflation, high cost. But despite of all these challenges, we are fully committed on pushing this project forward. Since our last meeting with planning department last month, we have secured the $6 million of cash CAC payment that is payable to the city in the month of May next month if our uh, extension is granted. We have also uh, secured the, a $7 million letter of credit to build the new city road, uh, also give, presented to the Richmond City uh, by next month if our rezoning could get adopted and the extension is granted. So we are literally at the finish line. All we're seeking is an eight-week extension so that our lawyers would have the time to finish the legal, legal agreements to get our adoption across the finish line. It's been challenging getting to this point in time, and uh, just thinking about the consequences of not getting this extension is even more challenging. We would be forced to basically waste years of our time as well as the city's time. Uh, we would have to redesign the entire project from zero because we would lose 20% of our market density. Uh, we, would, we would be converting that 5% to lemur, 15% to rental, and given the economic conditions we already mentioned, this would simply make the project impossible, and 
we would be forced to just put the project on hold until the time that conditions change and we could restart the project and this whole process all over again. Um, and lastly, to wrap up, I'd just like to say a few words about Lemur and Rental. Um, our company, Land and Global Properties, have been developing high-rise residential enrichment for over 10 years now. We have a very successful two-tower project completed on the corner of Gilbert and Umbridge Way. It's called Cascade City. I myself actually personally have lived in Richmond for many years. We have friends and family here. We are dedicated to the long-term growth and development of Richmond. We understand that there's a housing crisis. Richmond needs more affordable housing. Richmond needs more rental. And Richmond also needs more market housing. And I believe that the way to achieve more housing is not by pausing or canceling a project like we have in front of us today, but to allow it to happen, allow this to go forward, allow us to build 360 units of market housing this year, allow us to build the hotel, it's 180 rooms um, operated by Marriott, four and a half star luxury lifestyle hotel, along with all the benefits of tourism and um, employment and allow that to happen this year. Allow us to have another amazing success story in the city of Richmond, like just like what we had at Cascade City. And with that success, then we can quickly move on to our next new project in Richmond, one with 15% rental, 15% lemur, all built into this project right from the get-go, right from the feasibility study from the beginning. So with that, thank you again for your time and consideration. I really hope that you can vote in favor of our extension so that we can make this particular project in its current shape and form turn into a reality. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Mr. Chen, before I go to other committee, I want to ask a couple of loaded questions. Um, to be quite frank with your Red Staff report, and then I actually read your letter, uh, which I, in a way I took offense to from our staff. Uh, I think you dropped the ball. To be quite frank with you, coming to us for extension. Can you, to committee here, say if we grant the extension, you can do the job? Do you well, have the new people in place to do the job? Well, absolutely, Councillor. Um, we've we've been here at this project for five years now. All we're asking is an eight-week extension. We wouldn't be asking this if we didn't think at the end of the eight weeks this would be a possibility. Hence, why we're here today, asking for this eight weeks so that we can make this a reality. Yeah. Well, I think we rezoned it and gave you time because you asked for that time. So, no, I'm, I'm very serious about this, okay? And um, because I, I'm not tremendously supportive of thinking you're giving us all these things the city isn't doing as well as you think from my perspective. I've been around a long time. So the answer is yes, you can do the job. So we'll let other uh, councillors talk. And um, I know there's lots of questions, but uh, I think your comments of staff have been unfair. Thank you very much. I think your staff dropped the ball. Okay, so I think you should take that back to your committee. Okay, uh, Councillor Liu. Uh, thank you, through the chair. Uh, thank you for your presentation. Um, you seem a little stressed, so I'm wondering, um, this eight-week extension, does it also help you with other people that are involved, other stakeholders that are involved? Like, if we don't give you the extension, are there immediate repercussions in terms of lenders or other people that would kibosh this? So not whether or not you and staff are able to whip the next few pieces of the puzzle together, but are there other pieces at play that are putting extra pressure on this? Well, absolutely. It is a very stressful time because of the, such a time restraint given on the market. Um, if we don't get this extension, the project would basically be put on hold. Um, but, and, and as everyone mentioned, um, Chichi mentioned, the financial feasibility of losing 20% of the market value simply in this marketplace does not work. So from a financing point of view, from a banker's point of view, from the project as a whole, it would just be shelved until uh, for I don't know how many years. Okay. And Remind me again, you, you put up on your little overhead, you said, um, you know, you'd done the consultation with the neighbors. Was that after the clock was ticking or before the clock was ticking? Because I appreciate that you did do the consultation with the neighbors. I, I know that there was a lot of work on that. I know you were changing alleys and design features and putting stuff underneath the building, inside the building, instead of running it outside the building. But um, 
Was that before or after the clock started ticking? Oh, no. Thank morning? you for this question. Um, yeah, and correct. We had to do an extensive um, consultation with the, with the neighbor regarding the lane. And uh, um, I mean, obviously our team can get a better um, chronology of what happened, but that definitely added about five to six months of time that was after when the clock started ticking. So after the clock started ticking. Okay, thank you. Okay, like something. Okay, Andy. Uh, thanks, and through the chair. Uh, well, thank you for the presentation, um, and I, I don't want to be repetitive, but it, you touched on it, and I just want you to clarify a little bit, because sometimes we have conversations and we think that, well, 5% more of this or 20% more of that, and, you know, something will happen in any case. But I think I heard from you pretty clearly that in your pro forma or your economic outlook for this project, that if uh, those numbers were to change, uh, if we... Uh, in if we accepted staff's recommendation, the prospects for this project going ahead uh, are what percentage? And I believe you said it would be shelved, but I don't want to put words in your mouth. So what would happen with the project? Thank you, uh, Councillor Hobbs. Yeah, correct, if we were um, not granted extension, we missed the deadline, we would be uh, adding 5% of lemur, 15% of rental, so we would lose 20% of our entire marketable density. And that, that change would shelf the project and uh, we, were un we would be unable to proceed until um, market conditions change and we, 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 our, all our work in Richmond would basically be paused. Okay, and, and I know you did say that, but I, I did wanna hear it again just to make sure I heard it right. And just one last short question is, and this will have to be a ballpark figure, I believe, but what have not specific increases in the project since it began? Because we all know costs have gone up, land costs, labor costs, material costs. But what is the rough percentage increase in this project since the ball started rolling on it, roughly? Do you know? Do you have a rough idea? Um, I can't pull the number um, directly. Uh just directly in my mind, but in terms of cost increases, um, this is this is across the board for everybody. Uh, so interest expense have basically tripled um, for all projects. So every year of holding, let's say if it costed fifteen dollars per year on a per square foot basis, it would cost three times of that just to hold it per year. And construction costs, of course, have escalated on a yearly basis. So all of that is adding on to the cost of. Uh, this project and then the most important one as well that if we were to purchase let's say a new site in Richmond today we would factor in that there's only there is 15% rental 15% lemur and 70% market housing so that would be how we would pencil in the project to make it work but that's not the case in this in for our site is that we purchased this under certain assumptions of 10% uh, lemur as well as we are we have a um, 30% of commercial density, so that's a hotel component in itself, which adds challenges to the project already. Okay, thank you. you okay, good. Jack? I have questions for staff, but I will ask the applicant first. Um, now, you mentioned about uh, the fact that if this is being denial, uh, then you will uh, have to put the project on the shelf. Now, on the other hand, if we give you the extension, how fast can you build the building? Oh, thank you for the question, and that's a great question. Um, so we have a sales center already uh, applied and under construction at our old project on Cascade City, right on Gilbert Road. So the plan is to market this project in September to sell the two residential buildings, and as soon as we hit our uh, construction financing requirement on the pre-sale levels, we will start construction. Okay, good, thank you. you okay. Are there any questions? Any questions on the video? Seeing none. Nope. Hello. Go ahead, Carol. No, no. I, I have a question. Uh, I just want to make comments before we vote. Do you want to make your comments after then? I'll let the delegation yes, go. Okay. Thank you. Thanks very much. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. And I believe your question. Could staff come back because um, some of the uh, councillors have questions. Uh, I have two questions. <laughs> Uh, no, oh, that the, or Good. Okay. the original project will have uh, 321 units plus 35 lima units. So if we deny this and they have to redesign the thing under the new regulations, what would be the changes in numbers? Like, you know, uh, they, they lost some units and then they have to increase the lima units as well, right? Uh, through the chair to Councillor Rao, it would be as the applicant indicated, they'd have to redesign the project. The unit mix would change. 
the percentage of low end market rental would increase by 5%. Uh, that would take you to approximately 45, 45 units. units. Uh, and then you'd also have to pencil in an additional 45 market rental units. So you'd be looking at a significant reduction in the number of strata units. Roughly, do you have a rough number? 55. Okay. Um, now, do we have other similar cases in, 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 in place? Like, you know, they are not meeting a deadline and if we, you know, deny this or we approve the extension, what would be the impact for the other applications? Uh, through the Chair to Councillor Al, we have uh, three other grandfathering deadlines that come into effect this year. Mm -hmm. So this project is the only project that has the uh, low-end market rental deadline attached to it. Uh, there is a rezoning application in the Spires area, which is for townhouse development. Uh, that has a deadline in June. And then there are three projects that uh, have June deadlines associated with mm -hmm. the provision of market rental. Okay, so in other words, no matter how we design on this application, it has no impact on the other projects waiting. Uh, through the chair to uh, Councillor Al, yes, each project would be considered on its own basis. Uh, okay. the, the grandfathering provisions are different uh, criteria. The same principle applied, though, in terms of one year from uh, right. Council consideration to adoption. Right, okay. I just want to make sure that it, that doesn't set a, a precedent for the other cases. Oh, My yes. final question is, um, now if they have to redo the application altogether, how long will it take? Uh, through the Chair to Councillor Al, in terms of the rezoning process, you'd be able to work off much of the, the existing work that's being done, so the road designs wouldn't be changed significantly. Um, it would still require a new rezoning application, a new development permit application. Um, the design of the building would also likely change as a result of uh, changing the unit mix and the tenure. So we're talking about a year, two years? Uh, I would say best case scenario, probably 18 months. Okay, good. Thank you. Okay, um, Andy. Thank you and, and through the chair. Uh, first of all, thanks for the report, and uh, I understand why the recommendation is to deny uh, the applicant's request. That's, I think, pretty clear and standard uh, operating procedure. Um, I do want to just verify what I've heard from the applicant, too, in that um, the applicant and the city together, of course, but the applicant primarily has been working diligently to make this project happen and essentially in layman's terms there hasn't been foot dragging and there has been unforeseen things that have happened. Um, I want to make sure that that is the case and I also want to make sure that an eight-week extension which on the one hand doesn't seem like much to me uh, is sufficient and realistic in terms of actually being able to get the project off the ground if the extension was granted. Uh, through the Chair to Councillor Hobbs, yes, I would say that uh, the applicant and staff have been proactively working to achieve the deadline. Uh, we're in the position where that is not achievable at this point in time. Uh, there are really two or, or three issues uh, that are driving the request for the deadline. Uh, one is the registration of legal documents. The legal documents are being drafted currently. Eight weeks should be sufficient to complete the drafting uh, process and register those documents on title. The off-site servicing de design drawings are, have been reviewed by staff in terms of a first submission. Uh, we would be expecting the second submission to be forthcoming. Uh, depending on the nature of that submission, we do believe it will be in order for us to enter into a servicing agreement. And then the last issue is the monetary securities and cash contributions, and the applicant has advised staff that uh, they have secured uh, the appropriate funding uh, to provide those contributions should the extension be granted. Just a couple other questions to the chair, if I may. Um, because the concern for me and, and the quandary is um, if I were to vote to uh, grant the extension as I'd be going against staff's recommendation and I know that our staff does uh, very thorough um, analyses and the reports are excellent so I'm very reluctant and hesitant to go against staff recommendations but I also understand that you know we are in a housing crisis getting something built is important whatever that is different um, parts of the housing continuum are equally important and so 
one might think that if this goes back to the drawing board, we might get more in terms of lemur or in terms of rental housing, which are all important, and market housing. But there's no guarantee that that will happen. So my, my question actually is, um, can you just comment a little bit on what we all read uh, globally, nationally, provincially, and locally here in Metro Vancouver about the, the things that are detrimentally uh, happening uh, in the development community, the housing market now, that weren't necessarily happening pre-pandemic? Because my understanding is there are real things, interest rates an obvious one, even I know that one, but maybe you might be able to put a little bit more meat on the bone. Uh, through the chair today, Councillor Hobbs, yes, I would say that uh, the development industry is undergoing tremendous stress at the moment. Uh, construction costs have progressively risen over the last number of years, on average, five to six percent. Uh, in terms of interest rates, we are looking at historically high interest rates in terms of recent history. That does have a significant impact on carrying costs. Um, and then in terms of transactions, purchase of units, those the overall volume is also lower as a result of the interest rates. So there's a number of factors that are uh, impacting project viability at this point in time. Okay, and I'll wrap up, uh, Mr. Chair, The uh, because my concern is we are short on Lemur, we're short on market housing, we're short on all kinds of housing. We're even short on hotel rooms in Metro Vancouver. So uh, that's one thing. But uh, one thing I do want to uh, be assured of in my own mind is that if we were to um, vote for an extension and basically against staff's recommendation then um, I want to know that that's not a precedent setting uh, thing as it would be in a court of law where people would be bound by precedent that doesn't mean that we have to do that uh, in the future with any other development uh, even if they had identical circumstances and no development would have identical circumstances in any case so uh, through the chair to Councillor Hobbs that is correct uh, each application would be considered on its own mesa own merits and own case-by-case -case, uh, criteria. All right, thank you, thank you. Okay, um, Alexa. Thank you, <coughs> the chair, thank you. So what's triggering this is because we as council move from our 10% to the 15% plus 10% um, lemur and market rental. And we applied a 12 month Time limit, but we could have chosen 14 months or 18 months or anything else, and any of those numbers might have been reasonable. Um, so, our options now are either we can just say maybe an extra eight weeks is reasonable, so we as council can decide that. Um, I suppose we could audit everybody's timelines. We could go, and I don't think we're in the business or in the mood necessarily to make either staff or the applicant look bad by delving into where a possible mistake has been made. Um, although that, that's an option, but, but we could have also just had a different number from the outset. Is that correct? Uh, through the chair to Councillor Liu, yes. Uh, the 12 month uh, deadline was an, a somewhat arbitrary deadline. Okay. Uh, a project of this scale was always going to be challenging to meet that 12 month deadline. We are talking about significant servicing works along all frontages of the property. Um, this isn't a, a, a simple project. Okay, so it might make sense to give this to relook at whether or not even that one year is reasonable because are we putting applicants and staff at an undue burden to try and push everything along and get in under these wires? Uh, through the Chair to Council, uh, again, this is the only project that has this. This is end. the only one that's running into this problem because of just how things applied. Yes, and in terms of, uh, you know, the, the reason for the deadline, um, what we did not want to see is a rezoning application be grandfathered at a lower low end market rental provision rate and for that project to sit at public hearing for years on end before proceeding to adoption. Okay, but this one clearly hasn't. Had we picked 12 months or 14 months or whatever it was, it would have, all, any of those numbers might have been reasonable. So even though you're, vote, you're suggesting that because it contravenes the policy, you're saying no, but reasonably as a planner and someone who's gone through the project, an additional eight weeks makes complete sense, and had we just made it 14 months, everybody could sleep tonight knowing with a, a uh, happy heart. Through the chair to Councillor Liu, I would say that the June 10th date 
there is some magic to it. If you went beyond June 10th, the 15% market rental requirement would also kick in. So in terms of a reasonable extension, I would not go beyond June 10th. Thank you. Good. All right, Carol? Yeah, thank you very much. Um, so in the report, it states that Landa Legal Council have yet to receive the required legal agreement for rezoning adoption posing a significant hurdle due to insufficient time to review. Can you comment on that, please? Uh, through the Chair to Councillor Day, our ability to draft legal documents was based on us receiving legal plans to support the drafting of those documents. Those legal plans were not provided to the City until the end of January. So while document drafting has been initiated and that work is progressing, the documents have not been provided to Landis lawyers at this point in time. Okay, and is it correct that they bought the land in 2019, that they passed public hearing May 15th, 2023, that they had approval of the functional plans on November 29th, 2023, and the building set of complete drawings was done by November 23rd, 2023. Um, but it took time because I mean, we've been busy. I mean, we're dealing with Bill 44 and other changes. Is it possible that if we hadn't have had all these delays due to the lane being rebuilt, basically redesigned, due to you know staff obviously being busy, very busy with Bill 44 and other bills, that th these timelines were possible had we not had all these interruptions? Uh, through the Chair to Councillor Day, I, I would say to achieve the 12-month deadline, there, there had to be no periods of inactivity on anyone's behalf. Um, the timeline does show that there were minor periods of inactivity. Just minor? Yes. Okay. Uh, you know, for this reason, I, I think these are extenuating circumstances. So I will be voting against denying this application because I think that this is a very unusual case. And why, while, while I originally voted against the lander proposal because I wanted the 15% lemur, uh, council as a whole voted for it, uh, and, um, and ultimately it passed. So these seem like uh, reasonable technicalities. And so I'm okay with uh, allowing for the uh, eight weeks extension. Thank you. So, Mr. Craig, if I could uh, just summarize, you're okay. Yeah. Um, summarize. So, you uh, you have full confidence that if you're given the information, which you don't have yet, the June deadline is achievable. Yes, Mr. Chair. Okay. Thank you. All right. I'll move the recommendation. I'll, no, no. I'll move the request to extend the rezoning adoption okay. to okay. June tenth. I'll second that. For a discussion. Okay, have we had enough discussion? Carol, Michael? Yep, I'm happy. Okay, all right then. All, seeing none, all those in favor? Carol, I can't, sorry, well, wave at me. Okay, yep. Yeah, thank I'm you. waving. Yep. <laughs> it's scary. Okay, thanks very much. The extension is granted. Thank you, staff, for all your good work. Keep up the good work. Okay, all right. Oh, yeah, okay. So, that's it? Okay, do we have manager's reports? Yes, we do. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Just one item. I just wanted to introduce actually another new planner in our policy planning department. Uh, her name is Judith Mosley, and I'll Where are ask you? her to stand up and, and wave. She's Come on our, down. Welcome. She will be our new heritage planner, and uh, we're very excited to have her. We managed to poach her from the city of New West, and uh, she's also oh, done oh, work. Oh, uh, she was Ferguson also the past executive director of the. There, uh, let me tell you. And she's past executive director of the Vancouver Heritage Foundation as well. So we're uh, at least she knows which side of the river is better. Yes. Okay. <laughs> All right. Any other managers' reports? Any other uh, items for the good planning? All right. Motion to adjourn. We're adjourned. <laughs>